Utility Sports Video Today is brought to you by Manscaped, the best company in the world when it comes to men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family's jewels. Manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the Performance Package 4.0. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you from Utility Sports. Use code UTILITY20 for 20% off plus free worldwide shipping at manscaped.com. Again, use code UTILITY20, U-T-I-L-I-T-Y-2-0 at manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping. Does your current hygiene routine leave you with a whole bunch of nicks, cuts, and it overall just a hassle? Well, luckily for you, the Performance Package 4.0 has arrived, and wow, is it a game changer. Manscaped sent us this package so we could share how great it is with you, our awesome viewers. Inside this package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker nose and hair trimmer, the Crop Preserver ball deodorant, the Crop Reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a free travel bag to hold your goodies. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is waterproof, has a phenomenal LED light to help you with precise accuracy and is a fourth generation trimmer which features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Additionally, the Weed Whacker nose and hair trimmer is waterproof and does a really good job keeping your skin safe and protected. The Crop Preserver and Ball Deodorant plus Crop Reviver Toner are game changers when it comes to your hygiene routine. Trust me, you'll never look back and your balls will thank you. Performance boxer briefs and the travel bag are free gifts on behalf of Manscaped as part of this awesome performance package 4.0. I love wearing and rocking all of Manscaped's products and you should too. Make sure to check them out using code utility20 on manscaped.com. Remember, this is specifically for our viewers here at Utility Sports. A 20% off discount code plus free shipping when you use the code utility20 at manscaped.com. Yes, 20% off plus free worldwide shipping at manscaped.com when you use code utility20. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. There, everyone, welcome back to Utility Sports. In today's video, we're taking a closer look at my Dallas Mavericks. We are just 10 days away from the NBA trade deadline. I'm recording this February 1st, and the trade deadline is February 10th. So we are in the final stretches here of what we could see for the NBA trade deadline. And the Mavericks currently sit sixth in the Western Conference. They have one more loss in the loss column than the Denver Nuggets and are just uh, right there with them. They could easily jump back up to fifth. Potentially, they could get up to fourth as well. They're right there in that stretch. So it would be huge for the Mavericks if they could get to fourth. We're going to take a look Take a look at ways for this team to improve. I've got three mock trades prepared and one other player that I think that they will end up targeting this year. But that will not be via trade, and I'll show you exactly why that is the case. If you guys are new to Utility Sports, make sure to leave a like, subscribe as well. We talk about the Dallas Mavericks a ton here, as well as just stuff about the NBA, a little bit of the NFL as well, uh, and some MLB, NHL. So if there's something you're interested in, this is the perfect place to be. Make sure to be subscribed and don't miss out on more of the content coming here at Utility Sports. So now let's take a look at the first player they could get. And you're going to notice here that this has trade failed. That's because it's going to be nearly impossible for the Dallas Mavericks to really trade for Goran Dragic from the Toronto Raptors. His $19.5 million salary price tag is way too high for the Mavericks to really make a move on. When you look at the players that they'd be willing to give up, I included Trey Burke and Sterling Brown. Those are two guys they'd probably be willing to part ways with in a deal for Goran Dragic. And that's just simply not going to work because they need to add more salary cap more salary numbers into this deal to make it work. And that'd be a guy like Dwight Powell. And I don't see them wanting to include Dwight Powell into a deal for Goran Dragic. My expectation is Goran Dragic gets bought out by the Toronto Raptors and lands with the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks badly need a bench point guard, someone who can come in, handle the ball a little bit, especially with Jalen Brunson in the starting lineup now. 
and with Tim Hardaway Jr.'s injury, this makes all the sense in the world, especially his relationship with Luka Doncic. Mavs fans know exactly what I'm talking about. Those two are closely related, closely tied, based off some of their ties with overseas basketball. They've been on the same team multiple times before, playing in the Olympics, playing in FIBA, and playing in general, just overseas, uh, throughout regular seasons there. Goran Dragic really knows Luka Doncic. His younger brother, Zoran Dragic, also played with Luka overseas. So very tight-knit relationship, and I think it's going to lead Goran Dragic to the Dallas Mavericks, and I think it's going to be a phenomenal pickup for Dallas. Moving on to our actual first trade here, and this is a an interesting one to a player that the Mavericks were tied to during free agency, and that's Rashawn Holmes. The Kings, their season's just not going as planned. They need to switch some things up. Rashawn Holmes, he's the guy that I could see the Mavericks really pursuing in a trade. Here for the Mavericks, you trade Dwight Powell, who's been pretty productive this year and has looked better than uh, he has last year, especially coming back from that injury, gave him another year, he's looked better. And you attach a 2025 first round pick, which is the most early first round pick the Mavericks can trade because of the 2023 first, that's out to the New York Knicks and the Stepien rule. And instead, the Kings pick up those two pieces, Dwight Powell, who is a solid center, not good, but solid. And you get that first round pick, probably fully unprotected from Dallas. So that's an asset to add to the uh, cabinet of assets there for GM Monty McNair. And the Mavericks bring in Rashawn Holmes. He's two years younger than Dwight Powell. And he's quite frankly, just a better center than Dwight Powell. He cleans the glass better. He's someone who is a little bit more consistent as a role man, especially in the mid range area. You don't have to get him all the way to the rim. Has a really nice floater that I don't think a lot of people see because the Kings aren't on national TV very often. Luckily, I do buy NBA League Pass, so I have a chance to watch pretty much every single team whenever I want. So uh, I've gotten to see a lot of Rashawn Holmes. I definitely see him as a massive improvement over Dwight Powell on this team. He's just a more well-rounded center who I think provides a little bit more rim protection, a little bit better rebounder, and I think a really good fit next to Kristaps Porzingis in the front court and as a pick and roll partner with not only Luka Doncic, but I think him and Jalen Brunson would find a lot of success together as well. We know Brunson really runs the second unit a ton. Uh, they try and stagger his minutes with Luka a little bit to keep a ball handler on the floor. Especially if we bring in Goran Dragic, you need to have a nice pick and roll guy. Rashawn Holmes is one of the best in the league in that regard, and I think would be a phenomenal pickup for the Dallas Mavericks. Moving into our next trade. This is a big one, and it's based off the reports. There's been a ton of rumors that the Dallas Mavericks are going to be looking at forwards. And one of them that has come up frequently, including last offseason again, John Collins, the power forward from the Atlanta Hawks. He's a phenomenal player. And here, the Mavericks have pretty much one consistent package that they can send out in a deal for a big-time forward like John Collins. And that's going to include Trey Burke for money purposes, Dwight Powell for money purposes, and then Dorian Finney-Smith. He's the real sweetener here. He's the player that a lot of teams are going to have interest in acquiring at the deadline. He's a perfect fit into pretty much every single team, and he's due for free agency this year. So I think the Mavericks will actually look uh, around and listen to offers on him because there's going to be a little bit of panic since him and Jalen Brunson are both headed toward free agency, that the Mavericks might not be able to keep both at the price takes they want. I think Dorian Finney-Smith is going to be someone who gets a very nice contract. I could see him getting north of $13 million a year, and that does put a little bit of pressure on Dallas trying to keep him. So instead, they use him as an asset in this trade. Trust me, I'm a Mavs fan. I have a Dorian Finney-Smith jersey. I don't want to trade him. I love what he is, but we're looking at potential trades, something that they might look at regardless of if I love it or not. And I, I do actually still like this trade a little bit. You give up your 2025 first, like we talked about, and then you also attach two second round picks. I don't think Dallas would give up two firsts in a deal for John Collins, but they do attach two seconds to get a little bit more value in there for Atlanta. And Atlanta sends out John Collins. John Collins is easily the best player in this trade. And I really like this for Dallas because it would slide Kristaps Porzingis to the center position. We still would have Marquise Chris off the bench. We still have Boban Marjanovic off the bench. But then you start John Collins, you get a little bit bigger, you get a little bit longer, you get a little bit more athletic. And I really like that because John Collins is a beastly jumper. I could see lobs from him, uh, from Luka to him all day long. He's a perfect fit into what Dallas really needs. It's tough giving up Dorian Finney-Smith. He's a huge part of this team. I love what he is. He's been a phenomenal development story for the Dallas Mavericks. But this is an upgrade and you get a guy who's under contract, age-wise fits with your roster, 
and the talent is there. He can shoot the three ball. He can finish around the rim. He can be a really nice scoring asset. Uh, and he could be a big part of Dallas going all the way at some point for a championship. I still think Dallas has a shot this year to win it all. I don't think that is completely done and over with. Now we need to tighten up some things. And Luca needs to get a little bit more efficient shooting the basketball. And I think a big part of that is he needs to get to the rim a little bit more consistently one on one off the bounce. But at the end of the day, I still think that we have a shot. Luka Doncic, playoff time, we know what he can be. He's dominated the Clippers for two years. Of course, we didn't win either of those series, but he was phenomenal. And I think you put another really good player around him who has had success in the playoffs like John Collins. And this Mavericks team gets all the more deadly, which leads us to our final trade here. Another one that has to do with some rumors, Jeremy Grant to the Mavericks. There's been a little bit of steam uh, and a little bit of smoke, especially on NBA Twitter about Jeremy Grant potentially going to a team like Dallas. I know the Kings have had some interest. The Lakers have shown interest. The Wizards, a bunch of teams want Jeremy Grant, but there's going to be a certain price tag that none of them are willing to cross, and that's that two first-round pick threshold. I don't see him netting two first-round picks. So instead, we're throwing out that similar package here for what we threw out for John Collins. Send out 2025 first. Send out Trey Burke, Dwight Powell for money purposes. Dorian Finney-Smith, the nice player that the Pistons get in this deal and then they also get two second round picks on top of it for Detroit it's all about asset collection Jeremy Grant he has one more year left on his contract you're gonna have to be prepared to give him a pretty nice extension this offseason Dallas if you're gonna make this deal to be honest with you I prefer the John Collins route because he's already under contract we already know how much he's gonna be making whereas Jeremy Grant you have to sign him to a new extension he's a little bit older uh, and I just don't think he's as good of an offensive player as John Collins. I think he's probably a little bit better defensively than John Collins, but offensively, I think that's really where the Mavericks need to improve a little bit more, find a little bit more help for Luka and Chris Tops. I would prefer going with the John Collins route. However, I do see Jeremy Grant as a legitimate option as well for the Dallas Mavericks. Let me know in the comment section what you think about some of these trades. I know it's an interesting crop of deals. Very, very interesting deadline here for the Dallas Mavericks just because they are a team that has enough talent to go all the way if everything drops right for them but I think there's ways that they could still improve this roster get there I definitely see Goran Dragic being a Dallas Maverick by the end of the year and I think they do try and make a deal for one of these big time forwards uh, I hope they do I think it will really improve this roster let me know what your thoughts are again in the comments subscribe and like if you're new and we'll catch you in the very next utility sports video